In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a OneNote class notebook for your students. This is a relatively new application that was released by Microsoft, and if you are a subscriber to Office 365, you will have access to this. So the first thing you need to do to begin building your notebook is to log into your Office 365 account. Once you have logged into Office 365, you will land on a page that looks like this. In order to access the new method of creating your class notebook, you're going to come up to the upper left hand side and click on this tile so that you can find the class notebook tile. This is different than just regular OneNote, so make sure you're clicking on class notebook. Once we click on class notebook, it's going to jump to this screen, which is going to allow us to begin creating our notebook. You also have other tiles here if you have created previous class notebooks to add or remove students add or remove additional teachers, or get any notebook links for previous notebooks that you've created. So to create a new notebook, we're going to click on this first tile, and you're going to run through seven different steps to create your notebook. The first one is you're going to name your notebook. And you want to be relatively specific when naming your notebook because students are using this across different subject areas and they're using it in multiple years. So let's say if you are a science teacher, you may want to call this science grade 7, 2016, 2017. And then we're going to click Next. The second area is just showing you a preview of what will be included in the class notebook. There's going to be a collaboration space section, which is where teachers and students can edit the content of this particular tab section of the notebook. So if students are doing a research project and they're working in groups and need to be able to share information across their group members, this is an area where they both all will have editing rights. The content library is where the teacher can edit content and input content, but the student does not have access to make any changes to it. So this is going to be the area where if you have PDFs or Word documents, PowerPoints, anything that you might hand out physically on paper to students, you can now digitally put it into the content library for student access. And then there's going to be all the individual student notebooks, and this is going to be the area where the student has access to their own notebook, and they can edit content, and they can pull content that you put in the content library for them. And the teacher will also have editing rights and view rights to the, each student's notebook. So we will click Next. If you have a co-teacher, like an inclusion teacher, that you want to give access to your notebook so that they also have rights to add stuff to it, you could put their username in here and add them. If not, we click Next. And over here, this is where we're going to begin adding our students. Now, some teachers have asked, should I have different notebooks for all the different periods of classes that I teach, or should I have one master notebook? That's going to be up to you, but if you teach one particular subject area, and if you're going to be giving all the students in all of those classes the same kind of content, you may just want to create one master notebook and include all 80, 90, 100 students that you have into this particular notebook. It will be time consuming at first because you have a lot of names to enter, um, but you only have to do this once at the beginning of the school year. If you have other elective courses that you teach and the content's going to be different, that's when you might want to have a separate notebook for that. So for this purpose, we're just going to put in a test student in here. So you're going to begin typing in the username of the student that you want to add to your notebook. So all the students who are in your school who are, have Office 365 accounts, as soon as you begin typing in their username, their first initial and their last name, it will start to populate with names in the database. So I can hear CC Jackson popped up as soon as I typed in about five letters. So I can choose him. And then as I had additional students, I could continually type in the next student. And once I have all my students in, I can click Next. This section over here is asking you now, what individual sections do you want your students to have in their notebook? So think about when the students come in at the beginning of the year and they have a binder and you tell them I want you to have maybe a homework section, a class note section, a vocabulary section. What sections do you normally have your students include? You get to decide at the beginning what sections every single one of your students is going to have in their digital notebook. If the, any of these you do not prefer to have, you can uncheck any of these. And if you have additional sections that you want to include, you can choose your own. Sometimes less is more. 
because when students start moving things from the content library to their own notebook, there is always that chance they could potentially put it in the wrong section. So if you want to have fewer sections, it might be easier for them to navigate. So once you've decided on all of your sections, you will click Next, and you will see a preview of what the teacher notebook is going to look like. The teacher notebook will have a welcome page, a collaboration space, a content library, and then we'll have access to all of their individual students in their class. Whereas if I click on the student preview, the student also sees the collaboration space, the content library, but they only see their own notebook and then the individual sections in their notebook that we are pushing out to them. So once we're done, we click Create. And what it's now doing is it's setting up the permissions. It's creating this notebook. It is sending a notification to the students who I've added to this notebook. And as soon as this process is complete, the students would actually have access to their notebook if they logged into Office 365 and they clicked on OneDrive and they looked in their Shared With Me section. And that's something that we'll review in another video. So those are basically the seven steps to creating your notebook. If we want to launch it and see what it looks like, we can click Open in OneNote. And if you have the full desktop version of OneNote, installed on your computer, it will automatically open up and it might take a few seconds to sync everything down because we did create this in Office 365 which is on the internet so we are pulling the copy down from the cloud onto our computers and once everything has synced you will start to see tabs populate over here at the top you will start to see any pages listed over here and you will see the name of your notebook show up over here so you can see now, as I am the teacher, I have the collaboration space, the content library, and my two students. So that's how you create your notebook. In future videos, you'll see how to start building your notebook content using the content library and how to view your student work.